one of the big learnings, I think, at least for me personally in my career, was there was this, um, this meme on the early internet, and really for the last 10 years, that uh, because the internet was zero marginal cost, that it could be egalitarian, and that by making it available and accessible to everybody, um, that um, it, would, it would actually be democratic and, and great in all sorts of ways. But um, what we realized was that uh, without coupling ethics into our software, uh, these platforms just get usurped by oligarchs and tyrants. And so, in effect, what actually happened was that the internet converged to this digital feudalism and oligopoly. Um, and so now small companies are subject to the whims of, of these really big digital landowners. And individuals, like everybody in this room, uh, basically are subject to the whims of digital monarchs uh, that can track our every movement and, and can cut us off single-handedly from an entire digital economy. Um, and unfortunately, regulation is not going to work to fix this problem. Uh, as Gavin very astutely covered, uh, regulation is always, almost always years and years behind technology. So the real core learning here is that actually software is a mechanism for us to transmit our values. You can't separate software from values. Uh, and if you think of it that way, we have this really unique opportunity, which is we can actually emigrate to new digital territory. We can take this belief structure that we have about certain values that should exist and transmit them into software and bake them into the platforms themselves. So rather than uh, operating from a world where we think that values in exist independently of the software, we can actually bake our values into the software. Unfortunately, we don't have to worry about what values we really should encode in here because people basically fight for the same values over and over and over throughout history. People want freedom of speech, people want freedom of thought, people want privacy, people want freedom from un you know, unreasonable search and seizure. Like these are things that humanity has fought for over and over again. Um, now for us, a lot of these might appear to be self-evident. Um, and so platforms that encode these, these norms and these values into the software itself um, should be the ones that win, but there's no guarantee that they will actually win. Um, and in fact, there's a, there's a pretty meaningful risk that we regress uh, because platforms are going to emerge that make very fundamentally different value-based trade-offs, um, and, and they're going to ask these questions that we've litigated over and over, things like, why do you need privacy if you have nothing to hide? Um, and just because these, these arguments have failed in the past doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to fail again. Um, but in the long term, you know, if we think that our values are actually the ones that are going to create uh, the most utility for people and for businesses and, and everybody, um, then we can win. It'll just take a long time. And in the meantime, I believe what we need to do is we need to start reframing all of these technical, technical conversations we have in terms that communicate with normal people using terminology that they understand. Uh, and so when, when we talk about it, I think we need to start using terms like um, free speech, uh, protection from unreasonable search and seizure, uh, preservation of due process, things that we've all universally agreed, at least in this room, that are fundamental rights. Um, we also need to acknowledge that because uh, software is not independent of values, um, uh, we have a, a really unique opportunity to take this opinionated delivery mechanism, because software is opinionated, and seize that opportunity to codify these values into these platforms in a way that we never did with the internet, so that we can't have them co-opted in the future. Thank you.